Insurgents of jihadists have found a home in Iraq's sprawling Anbar province and have turned it into a hotbed of violence. My name is Leif Babin. I was a lieutenant at, at platoon commander of Charlie Platoon at SEAL Team 3, uh, task unit bruiser. Right away, we wanted to take our performance to the next level, and so we trained harder than anybody. You know, every, every type of uh, operation you could think of out in the deserts, uh, you know, shooting our weapons, patrolling on foot, jumping out of planes, and we had an awesome group of guys that, uh, that were just fired up, uh, ready to go get after it. We just had a, a solid level of trust across the board, up and down the chain of command. It's not about actually doing the skills and all the, the tactics perfectly. It's about knowing each other. And that's where, where everything really gels. Were you with these guys 24-7 um, for months at a time? It's, it's, it is family. It's the same thing. It's a group of friends that hang out together, live together, work together, work out together, go out together, and do everything together. That's, that's what a SEAL platoon is. Mark Lee joined our platoon uh, after we'd been working together for about six months. Right away, you could tell he had kind of a, a presence about him. You knew he was, he was a smart guy, a hard worker, a very strong Christian guy. His faith was very important to him. He came in and he's just a big dude, quiet, humble, and, you know, pretty fun-loving, you know, like to have a good time. Me and Mark, we were in the same boat crew, going through Buds and Hell Week and all of that stuff. You really get to know people when people are mad and tired and hungry. He would always be making jokes, didn't matter how, how much we were hurting. He was just absolutely hilarious. He liked to push the envelope on stuff. Mark showed up to Charter Platoon when he very boldly stated that uh, I've never been choked out before. And so Chris Kyle uh, and uh, a couple other guys uh, immediately uh, helped him out to make sure that that, uh, that was not the case. Mark immediately was, was one of us and uh, a big part of our platoon. From Iraq tonight, we have an exclusive look at what has become the single most dangerous city in that country for U.S. forces. An hour west of Baghdad, terrorists hold the city of Ramadi in a deadly grip, fueling the insurgency and taking a terrible toll on the several thousand American troops who are trying to hold them at bay. In 2006, Ramadi was the worst part of Iraq. It's the capital of Al Anbar province, the biggest state in Iraq. It was a total war zone. We were facing in what I would deem as evil an enemy as the U.S. Has, has ever faced. Back then, the enemy was identified as AQI, Al-Qaeda Iraq. You're talking about you know, some of the same people who are now ISIS. When you see the kind of things that they do to people and, and just the torture and rape and murder, talking people into becoming suicide bombers, anyone that stood against them, I mean, they're gonna cut their head off and make an example out of them. And, uh, and they're absolutely brutal and ruthless. And uh, Ramadi was kind of the epicenter of their, their insurgency. The first Brigade strategy of seizing the whole bill was about going into the worst enemy held areas, seizing those areas, building a permanent combat outpost, uh, and then moving out into the enemy territory from there, taking them back one neighborhood at a time. It was a radical strategy. There were people that thought that was crazy. Of course, for us, we initially thought, how can we get into those areas, right? Because if that's where the bad guys are, that's where we can have the most impact. We've gotten some Bradleys, went to the first house, and cleared it. Uh, no problem there. Got back in the Bradleys, um, and then we went to the next place. Mark looks over and he's like, hey, I raced you to the door. So we race to the door. I end up winning. I go into the first room, and uh, he goes down to the end of the hallway. And as we moved into that building, we started taking fire from an adjacent building. 
Bulls had started flying down the hallway right when I was coming out of the first room. Leif was standing right in front of me. He jumped into me, hit me, knocked me back into the room. He may have saved my life. I don't know. If I had walked out in that hallway, I might have gotten hit. Because uh, he ended up getting hit in the lat uh, by one of those rounds. And so Mark stepped up in the window to, you know, engage enemy, enemy fighters and protect the guys behind him and uh, was, was struck. We evacuated him as a casualty, sent our corpsman with him. Uh, you know, corpsman tried to do his best and utmost to work on him, but uh, um, he, he'd been shot in the head and killed instantly, and there was nothing anybody could do about it. And it was, uh, it was horrific, absolutely horrific. I was in the tactical operations center that morning. Leif got on one of the cops' radios and called with so much emotion in his voice that it almost sounded emotionless. He said, we had another casualty. I think he's KIA. Killed in action. This radio net was monitored by the entire brigade. So we were both doing our best to remain professional. To prevent names of casualties from leaking out, we do not use names on the radio. Roger, who is the casualty? There was a pause, and then he responded, Charlie one four. I looked up at the board slowly. I didn't want to see the name, but there it was. Charlie one four. Mark Lee. You have to figure out, like, what do we do wrong? And sometimes there is no answer for that. So why why did he get killed? Um, you know, probably could have been me. It could have been anybody. You know, he just was there, doing his job like like a good frogman. You know, and that's it. I always wonder what would have happened had he gone in the door first. Would I have had the the courage? You know, do what he did himself in harm's way to protect his guys. I want to say yes, but you never know till you're there. It's a crazy thing to think about for me. That whole effort in Ramadi, people that lost their lives there and got wounded and killed, you know, I knew, I knew who they were, you know. I, I can't get back Mark Lee. He's my brother, just like all my other brothers that died in Iraq and Afghanistan, but we made an impact when we left towards the end of October. We had cops all over the place now, so they had, they had a really good foothold. We won in Ramadi, and, and in a place that uh, nobody thought we could win. Ramadi was one of the safest places in Iraq for almost seven years. Uh, it remained that way, and, uh, and we know the formula, we can win again. Mark Lee was absolutely uh, one of those guys who knew that he could get shot killed at any time, and he went out and, and, uh, and, and, and did his job every single day, knowing that could happen at any time, uh, fearlessly, because he knew he was making a difference and believed in what he was doing. When you are lucky enough to experience a war, you can get very jaded because you can see that human beings can be abhorrent creatures and you can begin to question if there's really any good at all and it can become dark especially when it is your job <clears throat> to in some sense grow that darkness Mark proved that there was light and good. And maybe it was hard to see that in his life, but for some unknown reason 
or a reason that's beyond understanding. I saw it in his death.